Welcome to another Michael Jordan episode. We are doing 23 Michael Jordan videos in 23 days. Today, we have a great story. You probably have heard of the 63 point game against the Boston Celtics. That is very well known, but I don't think you've ever heard it quite like this. Today, we have many players involved on that day, including Larry Bird, Kevin McHale from the Boston Celtics, but also many players from the Chicago Bulls. They include Dave Corzine, George Gervin, Michael Jordan himself, Charles Oakley, Kyle Macy, and many other players that played in this day are involved in this video and tell their own version on the story. So I hope you guys do enjoy it. This video really did take a long time to edit, so I'd greatly appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. It really does support the channel. Let's aim for 5,000 likes for the next episode. Subscribe if you are new. There is a playlist link in the description and on the top right of your screen. If you click on that playlist, you'll find all the Jordan episodes we've done so far. And also, here are the credits that we use in this video. Be sure to check out them in their entirety. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. How do you describe, Danny, what it was like, you know, the guy that comes into the garden and, and, and did what he did, the 63-point game? Just you guys threw everybody at him. MJ dropped 63 in the playoffs. He gets 63. Michael had 63. First the Celtics, what was that game like? We just talking about It was that. crazy because you could tell in 1986 that he was going to be unbelievable player, the best player in the league potentially going forward. So I don't think that that surprised anybody, but it's just amazing how Michael just became who he was. They traded him for George Gervin, who was the highest paid bull on that team at $800,000. You were playing with the Iceman. So you played with um, <laughs> Jordan as a first two years? His second year. Second year. Yeah, yeah. Man, that brother played so hard, man. I mean, in practice, and in the game. Do you remember practicing against Mike? Oh, yes. Definitely. <laughs> there's, there's, I've never seen, he's, he was like a machine. You know, he would come in, he would never cross the line uh, before practice. He would stand at the lines, chew gum, crack jokes, chew his gum and talk. But once he crossed that line, he was he was a maniac. Bulls head coach Kevin Lockery knew the team had a star in the making. That the NBA is going to be a lot of fast-paced game, so I think I'm I'm pretty prepared. When he was at practice, he played practice like it was the last thing on earth. Uh, he's a type of player that when he goes into practice, he gives it his all, he works hard, uh, and the games become easy for him. Uh, he is a type of guy that's very, very competitive. He doesn't like to lose in anything. He was just a, a rookie coming in ready to, to learn and, and, and earn his position in the league. He didn't come in with an attitude or, or feel that he was better than anybody else. I get the impression that people are getting a negative view of Michael in terms of his ability to be a good teammate or how he acted as a teammate. And I, I think that's far from the truth. I think Michael was competitive. He was one of the greatest players, the greatest player in the history of the game. And he wanted to win championships. The knock on Michael when he got into the league his first few years there was he was just a scorer. Were you on the bench for the 63 point game? Yeah. 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 So that's when Gervin didn't play that much. Yeah, I don't know how I stayed on the bench that long. That's crazy. And George Gervin was on the bench yeah. when MJ hit 63. Yeah. Nobody, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was on the bench. I mean, you know, he gonna get 63 by letting me, you know, passing the ball a couple of times. Right. You know. Um, so did you know? Oh, uh, yeah, because, you know, I was old on my way out and Michael was coming in and, you know, really trying to show his presence and, you know, he probably looked at me a little <clears throat> different, you know, he always called me a hey, old man. You know, when Michael came in, it was different because he was a scorer, he had a scoring mentality, and as he got better, they started getting better players around him, but I go, man, can this kid play? They keep talking about how good he is. It was... 1986, this was the year that Jordan had broken his foot, missed 64 games. That was his second year in the league. Highlighting NBA news, the Chicago Bulls in an unfamiliar spot, their star Michael Jordan was injured early in the game. But it was a 111-105 victory as they beat Golden State, their 3-0 on the young season. Last year's Rookie of the Year, Michael Jordan, out with a broken left foot. And only played 15 games. And here you were on a Bulls team, and you yes. were a rookie. Do you remember the night that Jordan broke his foot in, in uh, against the Warriors? Does that ring a bell? It was the third game of the season. It was my second season. Uh, we're playing Golden State. I go up for a lob. 
Mahomes on the run to Michael Jordan. And when I landed, I landed flat-footed. I can remember him uh, breaking it. In fact, I think uh, uh, myself and Charles Oakley carried him off the court. Couldn't walk, so you had you were carrying his legs. Wow, I got to go look at the picture. Of that that's that's one thing I missed in the research here that you and you and Oak carried him up. When it did the cat scan, it was a clear brick, and I was done. I was devastated because it never got hurt. I'm in the cast. I couldn't do anything. I was anxious. I'm pretty sure I was irritable to a lot of people. The Chicago Bulls brass wanted Michael Jordan to sit out the remainder of the season so they could secure a high lottery pick within the 1986 NBA draft. I was itching to do something. So I talked the Bulls into letting me go back to college. He threatened the Bulls to spend most of his spring playing pickup basketball in North Carolina with fellow Tar Heels. The unfamiliar role of bystander had Michael at wit's end, and he needed to find a way to lessen the pain. Okay. It was crazy because that was when I think he came back from surgery. It was in this gym where the rehabilitation process would begin. I just started going to the gym shooting, and then I started playing one-on-one, -on -one, then I started playing two-on-two, -two, then I started playing three-on-three. -three. Next thing you know, I was playing five-on-five, -five, and the Bulls never knew I was doing it. And when I got back with the Bulls, my calf muscles and my injured calf was stronger than my uninjured calf. So the first thing they said, what in the hell have you been doing, blah, blah, blah. Uh, after my heart dropped out, uh, you know, I just dropped out and oh my god. I gradually worked my way up to a point where I'm playing five on five in a game. And I got the confidence that the foot is completely healed and I can and I can play on it. And you had the Bulls trying to hold Jordan back and Michael is being pulled out of games. Bulls had a minutes restriction on him. And they didn't want him to play. They wanted him to restrict him. And, and, and Jason, I'm a ball player. I'm playing. If I'm on the court, I want to play my 35, mm -hmm. 37 minutes. Checking into the game for the Bulls. He's back. Number 23, Michael Jordan. Everybody told me, you're a fool for playing. You should go home and relax and come back next season and see what happens. There's the double. Jordan, yeah. So now we start winning and we start getting into the playoff picture. As you guys are trying to make the playoffs and Stan's fighting with management, Jerry Reinsdorf and Jerry Krause are thinking long term, Michael wants to play. He helped lead the Chicago Bulls to the 1986 postseason. It was just amazing how he was just, he was fresh. I mean, you know, he, he ain't played but 20 games, but he played 82, so. The Bulls made a late season rush into a playoff berth, which ironically cost them a chance at one of the first seven choices in next year's draft. Essentially wills his team with a losing record into the playoffs. And what is their reward? Well, they get to play the almighty Boston Celtics. You guys ended up going to the playoffs and, and, and playing the Boston Celtics. We won 67 games, they won 33 games. Well, Michael was coming off a pretty serious injury and we didn't know what to expect. And this night they had lifted the minute restriction. The first two games, Michael gets 49, we win. You can say the games came a long way because Back then, they used to open the windows in arenas to keep the floor from sweating because yeah. of the ice. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now they ain't got to do that. But maybe, I don't know if you remember back then. Mm -hmm. That used to Call used to walk in the gym. Yeah. Man, the floor freezing. Oh, about freezing in there. The floor just slippery all over the place, I man. I always been cold. I mean, it's cold outside and they got ice on the bottom. Like, yeah. the hockey. I mean, it's yeah. just crazy. Of all the teams I've been on, there's no question that was the best team. It's hard to imagine that six weeks ago you were sitting on the bench. Yes, it is. It's very hard for me to imagine. I'm very happy I'm, I'm playing now, and I'm very happy I can contribute to the team. This is the opportunity to play against Larry Bird and the Boston Celtics. Man, this is showtime. Michael Jordan is back, and there are no limits to his playing time. So he's really ready to cut loose. And we're about ready to go on the Boston Garden. They took all the limitations off, and it was like unleashing a wild dog. Jordan hangs in the air, puts it down. Our whole thing was just do what we can do to hold Michael down. Uh, but you don't hold the great ones down. Michael Jordan. Wheels fades off balance. Oh. Absolutely amazing. Jordan hangs in the air. Jordan. Jordan changed it. Jordan beat Dennis. Oh. His eyes are his watch. Who do you have for the player of the game, Jack? Pretty hard to ignore Michael Jordan tonight. We 
chose him as our player of the game. 49 points, four rebounds. A spectacular individual effort by this guy. I remember game two. I'd played golf with Michael the day before. Danny Ainge said that between games one and two, you guys played golf, and you warned him to tell Dennis Johnson to get ready for a beatdown the next game. Did that happen? I played with him and Kevin McHale. It was Michael, Danny, and Michael and Danny are giving it to each other back and forth. Before game two, you played golf with Danny Ainge. Mm-hmm. And they were trash talkers. Because when I went to get him with this hand, I this hand came out. Oh, get out of here. You double dribble the ball. If two. I cannot hit it today. So, you know, we get on the golf course, they talk a lot of trash. And, you know, obviously DJ was an all-star. You know, he was known for his defense, which for, for me, that was a great challenge. Right. Me. So as they were joking about sweeping us and kicking our butts and blah, blah, blah. Uh, that was always a blast because, you know, it's always fun playing golf with rich guys who think they're <laughs> unbeatable. <laughs> I took a few bucks off of Michael that day, and we're talking trash to each other. That might have been a mistake. <laughs> Piss me off, man. We get done, we get in the car, we drop Danny off first, and uh, Michael says, hey, tell your boy DJ I got something for him tomorrow. You know, I kindly say, hey, you better tell DJ that, you know, it's going to be a hard day for him the next day. You were there for one of the most iconic games in the history of the NBA playoffs. I mean, still the, still the leading scorer in, in playoff history. Jordan was 63 in the Garden. And I, I jokingly tell everybody, yeah, we combined for 70 points. So, yeah, Michael had 63 and I had seven. The first game, a guy scores 49. But I don't think anyone expected going into the next game what was going to happen. We're underway here. The Celtics in white, the Bulls in red, and Boston control. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. Nice. I don't wanna go to work, cause my boss is a jerk, Jordan and I'm not even that paid. Bird, can't do it. I need a change in my life, cause I don't feel alive, and there's nothing like that makes me happy. Oh, hold my beer for a minute. A I'm about to quit my job, cash in for a ticket. I'm going on a trip, and I don't plan to visit. I'm gonna stay there till I feel like I'm winning all. He was scoring at will. Dunks, bankers, he'd get in the middle and shoot over guys. We got double team this dude every time he touches the ball. Man, I'm telling you right now, this dude is unreal. We double teamed yes. him every time he touched it. You had, you had to, like, we just started our whole defense to get the ball out of his hands. I play practically every minute in the second game. I just never stopped. But he was in another world, you know. The old, we lost, but he was—he put a show on. It was—it was a joy playing against him, and even back then, it was something you really wanted to look forward to because you knew you were getting the best every night. We all took our cracks at him that day. It wasn't one guy. Um, DJ was our best defensive player, and he picked up four fouls early in the third quarter. Four fouls on Dennis Johnson. Welcome to the club. I was on him for a while, Danny was on him, DJ was on him a lot. I remember laughing in the middle of the game because Walton was cursing me out because he had to guard Jordan on a few occasions. Walton with five, next foul and he's gone. Jordan isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Walton fouled out. It was a high scoring game. Fortunately for us, we had the last shot. Bird, pick and roll, Tyler. And a hard fought victory for the Boston Celtics to take a 2 0 lead. We were fortunate to win that game, but Michael put on a show. Our Miller Lite most valuable player of the game is Michael Jordan with an all time record 63 points in a single playoff game. A new NBA record has been set in the Boston Garden. When I'm on my, my game, when I'm really on like I was in Boston, I don't think it's too many people that can stop me. I don't think it's anybody that can stop me. We end up winning the series, but it was an incredible, incredible playoff performance. I, I've never seen it before, and I had never seen it after. I didn't win the game. I'd much rather score less <laughs> and win the game than lose the game and score 63 points. Larry Bird talks about that game like it was the new coming of Jesus or something. <laughs> <laughs> he paid me the highest compliment, and, and you know, I think uh, 
that was very gratifying that I earned Larry Bird's respect. Mm -hmm. He was popping and stopping. <laughs> what what Larry say? What Larry say? Uh, tonight, I think I witnessed Jesus on the basketball court. <laughs> oh, Larry Bird, yeah. yeah. That wasn't Michael Jordan out there. It was God disguised as Michael Jordan. Rephrase that. I mean to cut you off. God in the basketball uniform. After the game, Larry Bird would say, I didn't think anyone was capable of doing what Michael has done to us. Nobody like him. <laughs> Point blank. I never seen nobody play like he plays, and uh, and you can you can include all of them. It's like it was like they did everything they could for you know to have advantage. And uh, so you already got advantage. You got Bird, Karen McHale, uh, yeah. Harris, and DJ. DJ. You're like what more? You, and you got Red all back looking down. Mm. <laughs> so it's hard to believe a guy score that many baskets and uh, uh, and they lose. But uh, I know we started Dennis Johnson out on him, and then we went with uh, Danny Ainge, myself, uh, which. It was real easy then when I started gardening. Uh, then Bill Walton, and we was trying to run him to help all the time, but he had his outside shot going so well that he really didn't need to penetrate that much. Got it! 63 for Jordan! It was crazy, but it was, you know, the fans back then, like, they not, um, they was like, you know, they, they saw good basketball. The, the teams that you don't see that consistency, and, and what they do on a night, they, you know, like one night they lose by 30, win by 20, mm -hmm. you know, just, no it's crazy, mm -hmm. you know. You know, playing against Michael was also a dream come true. He was the greatest player of all time, in my opinion, and. But I'll tell you what, after that, I went like, boy, this guy is going to be something else. And of course, was, I'm with you. He's probably the best player that I've competed against and watched play. And a lot of it was just that that dude had a tenacity about him. He had no quit in him. That's one thing about you. I've never saw Michael Jordan quit in any game. After that game, Michael Jordan would transcend into being arguably the greatest player to ever hit the NBA. And if you did enjoy the video, help me out by hitting that like button. Let's aim for 5,000 likes for the next episode tomorrow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Here are two new Michael Jordan videos I think you will also enjoy. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Take care.